Following up successful unionization efforts at places like Starbucks and Amazon and others, hey, Trader Joe's, welcome to the team. You've got workers at a store in Hadley, Massachusetts. They voted 43 to 31 to unionize, becoming the first a store in that company to do so according to the NLRB. There is another store that's in the process I believe right now. And so this might start to spread as it has for others. We have some reactions from those who are taking part in this effort, which by the way is going through Trader Joe's United, an independent union that formed not too long ago. A message from Skyler, who's been there for three and a half years, saying, I'm Skyler and I'm voting yes for the union at Trader Joe's and Hadley. My amazing coworkers are the reason Trader Joe's is a great place to shop and we deserve a seat at the table in determining our compensation and working conditions. Tony Falco, who's worked there for 16 years, says, When workers stand together, we have the power. That's why I support Trader Joe's United. And Sarah's been there for 18 years, says, I'm voting yes. Because as a captain and now crew member, I watch the company put profit over the well being of the crew repeatedly. It's time for us to have a say in the decisions that affect our lives. That means a union and that means a contract. And there's a lot of information floating around about some of the issues that people at the Hadley store as well as others have with Trader Joe's. They have a robust retirement plan for many years, 15% of the earnings being contributed. But starting about a decade ago, the company lowered its contribution to 10%. Last year, it lowered it again to 5% for many employees. It has since announced that it would no longer specify a set contribution. So, you know, there it's not just that the, the, the benefits never existed and a contract might afford you them. They did exist. People had it for many years and it's slowly been whittled away. They had health care benefits that have been reduced for part time workers. They used to offer benefits to part time workers, but raised the weekly required hours to qualify from 20 to 30 hours a week after Obamacare was passed. They had some additional measures that came about at the beginning of the pandemic, safety and health related measures as well as additional pay. And all of those were dialed back as well. Many of the employees at these stores saying they were dialed back way too early in the pandemic. So there's a lot that that led into this store, let alone others deciding to unionize. But you know, as a person who shops at Trader Joe's, I like the idea that one of the local ones might be union soon. What do you both think about it? Yeah, it's great news. I'm I'm really one of the one of the sort of themes that I've been most just like my heart has been warmed by over the last two years has been the emergence of these unionization drives and movements. Um, I think it's really notable and 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 kind of we we need to understand where this comes from, right? This comes from a couple really really troubling statistics that are occurring in this country. The youngest generation in this country, or I guess one might say Gen Z is the first generation in the history of this country to make less than its parents generation. If you account for mm-hmm. inflation and other kinds of kind of control for various other economic variables, that's that's very indicative. And life expectancy is decreasing in this country. So you know, we've seen across the board, you know, Amazon workers, Starbucks workers, we saw the movement for a $15 minimum wage at Disney, McDonald's and so on. Uh, these are these are really really important movements that are occurring, but there are major threats uh, that they face. Consider, for example, how Starbucks said uh, that their uh, workers could they would fund them to travel to get abortions, but not for those who are unionized. Um, to consider how uh, many of these companies, especially Amazon, but I'm, not, I'm I wouldn't count put it past some of the retail giants are experimenting with both gig work, which is extremely insecure and extremely precarious, as well as with automated technologies, especially Amazon, right? People wearing Fitbits, drivers being monitored by all sorts of biometric and other surveillance systems. This is also to train robotic systems to replace workers. Yeah. So work and workers are precarious. And this is all part of the larger story of the incredible displacement of, of, of wealth and power and the incredible sort of fragmentation of an economic polity uh, that is at, at all, you know, sort of rational or reasonable in any democratic nation. And so these are the things that are occurring. And just the last quick thing I'll say is, you know, you know, John, I worked um, on Bernie Sanders 2020 campaign and I was like 
So honored to be part of that. And one of the things I think that's just been super cool about Bernie is how he has been showing up at a bunch of these uh, protests mm -hmm. and a bunch of these union unionization drives. And it's a good reminder that political change doesn't just come obviously from uh, progressives in Congress or maybe some liberals, but it also come, can come from people standing up for their rights. Yeah. Yeah, we've got two former Bernie 2020 folks on the panel tonight. That's, That's exciting. What's that? Uh, and then one yeah, loser. Was also <laughs> <laughs> I didn't do nothing. <laughs> um, okay, I have four points on the, the Trader Joe's Union. First, and maybe most importantly, hot labor summer, very important. <laughs> Secondly, I, I love Trader Joe's and I would feel better about shopping there if the workers had a union, pretty simple. And three, the commodification of everything for profit will not be successful unless workers are paid living wages fair wages, they will have no money to spend to buy your products if you don't pay them well. And it's a weird chicken or the egg situation where they keep raising prices, but they don't wanna pay higher wages. And eventually they're going to piss enough people off that people are just going to refuse to participate in the economy because it's not worth their time and they're gonna learn to like grow their own food or something. <laughs> um, the last point on Hot this. agriculture <laughs> summer, Hot coming agriculture to you 2027. Summer. <laughs> plants and vegetables, plants and fruits, okay, um, also, I know it's really easy to publicly support uh, all of the, the front of the house workers, right? The cashiers at Trader Joe's that we love, uh, the baristas at Starbucks. But it's very important to remember that Trader Joe's packages a lot of their own products. They make a lot of their own products. There are people in warehouse working for Trader Joe's that I'm sure are not experiencing much better labor conditions than the folks who work in the stores. And so I would like to see the warehouse workers get a union as well. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, and we should remember, by the way, that uh, while we do segments like this to uh, spotlight successful efforts and to you know uh, uh, even the attempts, uh, we should bear in mind it's not easy and it's not automatic. Uh, these things are difficult. There could be a lot of pushback. Uh, Ramesh was alluding to one. They'll sometimes say, "Here is a set of benefits that we'll give, but only if you don't unionize." We've had stores, even in uh, Southern California, uh, grocery stores, that have been entirely shut down because uh, they had started moving in that direction. Sometimes it's not as explicit. Um, but even in this case, there were mandatory meetings uh, where managers tried to dissuade them for voting for the union. Um, some were told explicitly to vote no. One worker said a manager sent him home in late May for wearing a union pin uh, to work. But interestingly, uh, successful unionization can improve the, uh, the quality of life, the benefits and the pay. Um, but it isn't even just for those people, for union workers or those who work in union stores. Uh, there's ripple effects from these sorts of things. We've seen that throughout the last year and we see it here too. Less than a week before workers began voting in, in Hadley, Trader Joe's announced in an internal memo that it was increasing benefits nationwide, raising Sunday and holiday pay by $10 an hour, as well as the rate of accrual for paid time off. It did say it would give out raises to employees with more tenure at the company to increase pay equity across the company. So um, basic, basically every uh, worker in America uh, was born and raised in a country that has done everything it can in terms of the news and popular culture to get them to hate the very idea of unionization, to hate the very idea of collective action, those sorts of things. Um, but thankfully, it doesn't seem like it's stuck, at least for some of the youngest generations. And so uh, there's another store in Minneapolis that's gonna be having a vote next month. Workers at a store in Colorado have actually filed an election petition just this week. So Trader Joe's is the uh, the next frontier apparently. You love to see it. And I wanted to mention one quick thing, John, which is I think we need to re recognize how uh, the working class in this country increasingly is not just described as sort of alienated white you know, rural peoples, for example. Um, it's, 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 we're often talking about women of color and we're actually talking about Gen Z. Mm -hmm. And many of these people are affected by the, what I call the part-timeization of work, the gig work, gig economy and digital labor. And so it's really important that we advance progressive movements, legislative possibilities that allow people who have fragmented types of work, you know, eight hours for TaskRabbit, 10 hours for Uber, you know, this kind of hustle of, of trying to live amidst massive amounts of student debt, yeah. mind you, and debt in general, that these kinds of folks who are in precarious and fragmented within these systems that no longer offer any sort of economic security have an ability to have collective power. Yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah, student loan debt that could be canceled, could be canceled right now or right now or 
Biden could do it now, that would be a good time, maybe later today, maybe he's eating, maybe he's biking, maybe he's falling off a bike, I don't know what he's doing, but he could do it after that, that would be great. Get up, dust yourself off, cancel student loan debt, I'd love to see it. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more, there's live chat emojis, badges, you've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR, so those are super fun, but you also get Playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.